as the soldier was bringing out, he was telling our people that we should not buy on the Sabbath. We, right. we don't need to sell on the Sabbath. All right. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. There's a reason why the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people are not supposed to buy on the Sabbath. We're not supposed to sell on the Sabbath. That's breaking God's laws. We need to come back to him and, and repent. So that's what these brothers out here telling you. We out here telling you not to break God's law. Read what you got, son. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. So the Most High God has chosen y'all to be a peculiar people unto himself. That means he chose the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people to be peculiar. He loved only you. Read it again. For, for thou art a holy people. That means you're separate. You're holy. That means you're, supposed, you're not supposed to do what uh, all these heathens are doing. We're separate from them. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee. So he has chosen you, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He has chosen you. Read. To be a peculiar people unto himself. To be a peculiar people unto himself. Right. Not to follow after the, after the traditions of men. Read. Above all nations. Above who? All nations. So you're above all nations. You're peculiar. You're holy unto the Lord thy God. Read. Right. That are upon the face of the earth. On the, upon the face of the earth. Give me uh, Matthew 15 to 3. This is Christ's words right here. We're not supposed to follow after the traditions of men. Because the Bible told you you are a peculiar people. He love you. And we're going to get y'all what love is. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 3. Bring it up. And, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? So why do you transgress? Hey, let me ask y'all a question. What do transgress mean? Huh? Transgress? Y'all know? Let me get that for you. Let me get sin. Let me get that for y'all. Because in Matthew 15 and 3, why do you transgress after the traditions of men? Why do you sin? Right? We're going to get y'all what sin is. Read. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin. So whosoever commits sin, right? Read. Transgressive also the law. Transgressive also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. So go back to Matthew. So now that we know when you transgress, it means to sin. Right? Read. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? So by your traditions, which is coming out on, on the Sabbath day to buy, sell, and cook. That's a tradition that our oppressors taught us. And the Bibles tell us not to do that because we separate, we holy, we peculiar unto the most high God. Right, but the God. reason why we've been taught these things is because we went into slavery as the soldier was bringing out because we went into slavery. Let me get that. Let me get Deuteronomy 15. It's the reason why we've been taught these things because the oppressors taught us this white guy right here. They taught us this, this guy right here, the devil. That's why we are uh, out here buying and selling today. Because we don't know who we are. Right, read. Yeah, let me get the, book, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. It but it shall come to pass. That means this will happen. This will happen to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you don't hear or listen to what the Most High is telling you, he's telling you this. This will come to pass if you don't listen. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe what? To do all his commandments. So you have to observe and do all his commandments. Read. And his statutes. And his statutes, not just ten. Because it's law, statutes, and commandments. The churches will teach you, oh, don't steal, don't kill. Yes, you're not supposed to do that. But it's statutes and commandments that follow along with that. That's Read. Right. Which I command thee this day. So he's commanding us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments this day, right now, on the Sabbath. Read. That all these curses. All these what? All these curses. Is curse a good thing? Exactly.
Exactly. It's a very bad thing. We shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these curses will come upon us and overtake us. This right here, this happened to our people. These are curses right here. You see us picking cotton, uh, uh, iron yoke. Yeah, hold that up for them. This is right here is curses. Because we didn't listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. This is what's happening to us, right? This is what happened to us in the past, but right now we mentally slave, right? Let me get Wisdom of Solomon, 19 and uh, 1. We're going to go back to that. But I'm going to bring out a, a strong point for y'all. I'm going to bring out a strong point for y'all because a lot of us will listen to this and see it and still just go do whatever we want to do. But the but, but most high God told y'all to come up here right now. He put the spirit on y'all to learn this, to come up here and say, I'm an Israelite according to the Bible. It's things I'm required to do. I got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. But a lot of us will hear that and still just be like, I'm going to go on by my day. But the Bible will tell you what's going to happen when you go on about your day. Read. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 1. Ask for the ungodly. So ask for the ungodly. The ungodly are the people who sin against the most high God. That's so right. when you transgress that sin, so it says, ask for the ungodly. The brothers and sisters who don't listen to what we say that was coming out this Bible, they are the ungodly. Read. Ram came upon them. What? Ram came upon them. So wrath came upon them who sin. Wrath come upon them. Right? Read. Without mercy. Without what? Without mercy. So the most high can kill you at any time because you're not hearkening unto the voice of the Lord thy God. As we read in Deuteronomy 28. Right? Read. Until the end, for he knew before what they would do. So until the end, he knew what you was going to do. So by y'all coming up here, I'm just telling y'all the warnings. So after these warnings, I'm going to tell y'all a solution on how to follow these laws, statutes, and commandments. But the, he said that uh, as before you knew. He knew he knew you before. Because a lot of our people are two-thirds that's going to die. Right? A lot of our people is going to die. The two-thirds of Israel's will die. The one-third who's the godly will be saved. But the Bible says he knew that you was going to be rebellious from the beginning. Right? Let me get Deuteronomy 9.24. So, as the ungodly, wrath will come upon you until the end. That's what the Bible is saying. So, by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, that's what's going to make you live. So, after this, I'm going to give y'all what makes you live. Right? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 24. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Just like we read in Wisdom of Solomon. He said, you've been rebellious from the day that I knew you. It's, but the reason why we was rebellious is because we broke God's laws. So we went into slavery. So now at this slavery, now we mentally slave. Because we buy, we sell, and we cook on the Sabbath. We even have to pay for water. We got to pay for food. We got to pay for clothing. That's a curse that we was reading in Deuteronomy 28. Matter of fact, let me get that in Baruch 3. You know where it's at. I want to prove this to y'all because our fathers have sinned. So when our father has sinned, that happened. And now the generations come back, we still are mentally slave. So in order to come out of that mentally slavery, we got to come back to the, the most high God laws. Read what you got. But this is a curse right here that we buying and selling today. Read. Yeah, hey. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8 Behold we are yet this day in our captivity So the Bible says we are yet this day in our captivity How are we yet this day in our captivity? How? Not by chains Not by that yoke of iron on our neck Not by that Read Where thou hast scattered us So he, the most High scattered us When we went into the slave ships we were scattered. We went to Haiti, Jamaica, America, you know, uh, Mexico. We were scattered everywhere. We for a reproach and a curse. So for a reproach and a curse, like we read in Deuteronomy 28. That's a reproach and a curse. We got scattered because we broke the Most High God's laws. We right. and to be subject to payment. Subject to what? To payment. Let me ask you a question. Y'all pay for water? Y'all pay for food, right? and uh, lights, and your housing. We pay for all that. That's a, that's a, our yet, uh, we in captivity to this day because we subject to payments, right? Read that again. 
for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our father. For the iniquities of our fathers, because when they was in the wilderness, they sinned against the most high God. So what is the solutions to uh, fixing all these things? Let me get, uh, let me get modest apparel first. Let me get modest apparel first. Hold that up. That's for the system. I got you next, bro. Now this ain't to get on you. You know, this is to teach you how it is. Let me get modest apparel. You see these beautiful sisters on this sign right here. See, you can still style. You know what I'm saying? You can still, you know, do all the girly stuff that women like to do. You don't have to be unmodest. Well, we're going to get that for you. Read what you got. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So women have to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Let me get that. Let me get that, soldier. The uh, definition of modest. Three. Modest of a woman dressing or behaving so as to avoid impropriety or indecency, especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. So you want to avoid attracting sexual attention because that caused our brothers to sin. That's the transgression of the law. So if they lusting after you because they want to do what they want to do because they see in your body, they see in your figure, and they say, oh, you know, I want to take her to bed. That's all they thinking about. We of clothing, not revealing or emphasizing the figure. So you want to have clothing that, that don't emphasize the figure. You want to wear a dress, a long dress that don't emphasize the figure. If you got, you know, wide hips, Get you a dress that's covering it up all the way down. Read. A modest dress means that hemlines must be below the knee. So it must be below the knee because, you know, brothers are lust after legs. They are lust after feet. But, you know, there's nothing we can really do about that. They heart mongers. You know what I'm saying? But by you being in modest apparel, that, that means you in a proper place. That means you doing what you have to do to keep the commandments of God. Right? So finish that up. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So that's that modest apparel with that dress, right, with fringes at the bottom of it. With fringes, that long dress with the fringes at the bottom. Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness and sobriety. That means don't be drunk. You know, don't be all out of space in your mind. You know, you got to have control of yourself. And shame faceness is, you know, you don't want to be all in men's face all the time because they are lust after you, right? Read. Not with broader hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So what the Bible is saying is you can wear jewelry, you can wear your makeup, but don't make that who you are. Don't be in there and be like, oh, I'm fancy now. You know, uh, this look good. You know, you don't want to do that. You want to, because these sisters, she got, on, uh, she got on the necklace right here. You know, she can wear that, but she's not making that who she is. She keeping it modest, right? Read the next verse. But which becometh woman professing godliness. So if you want to profess godliness, this is how you profess godliness. Read. With good works. With good works. This show good works by having uh, apparel that's modest. By having apparel that's modest. That's, that's right. your good works. According up. to these scriptures. That's right. right? Let me get uh, Isaiah 52 and 1. Let me, thank you, soldier. Let me get Isaiah 52 and 1. So because when you dress in modest, the Bible tell you to put on your beautiful garment, not beautiful pants, not beautiful shorts, but you have to put on a beautiful garment, a dress, right? right? Read. Book of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Bring it out. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. So put on thy strength, O Zion. Your strength is knowing who you are. Coming back to these law statutes and commandments. The women knowing how to dress. Our men knowing how to dress. Our men knowing how to keep their beard. Right? Keep their fringes. Keep their houses in order. Right? Read. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. How you have on a beautiful garment and you got shorts or pants on? 
I'm not trying to get on you, sis. I'm just trying to show you love out, out the Bible. Right? Read that again. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Yeah. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. So put on that beautiful garment. Don't You don't need to wear something that emphasizes your figure. Because that's just attracting sexual lust for men. Right? So let me get uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. This for men and women. Right? Because our sisters have to put on their beautiful garments that's below the knee with fringes. Okay? So we're going to get fringes right after this. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now, what is a, a woman's garment that a man should not wear? A dress. You agree with that, right? So that's a dress. So men shouldn't wear dresses. If we had dresses up here, y'all probably would have kept it moving. Exactly. So read the beginning. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what is uh, something that men wear that pertains to them that women shouldn't wear? Pants. That's right. Pants. That's what it is, sis. You shouldn't, sisters shouldn't wear pants, and our brothers shouldn't wear dresses. Why? Well, finish that up. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So if you do cross dressing, you're an abomination to the Lord thy God. And we're gonna get y'all what the abomination is. Give me Jeremiah, uh, what's that? Yeah, 44. So we're gonna show y'all what uh the abomination is. Because some some people say, hey, what's an abomination? Or it sounds bad when you say an abomination. But we're going to give y'all what the sense is on what abomination means according to the Bible. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44 and verse 4. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. So this is for the service, the prophets. We coming out here to teach our people. Right? Early in the morning, we out here teaching our people. Read. Rising early and sending them saying, Oh, and we rising up early to tell our people what? Do not this abominable thing that I hate. So don't do the abominable thing that I hate. The most high God said he hate abominable things. So that abominable thing is cross-dressing. We wake up early to tell our people not to do the abominable things that the Most High God hates, right? So when you come up, when, you, when we come out here, we teaching our people love. Let me get love. Let me get love. So this is what we out here doing. We teaching our people love according to the scriptures. Because some people say love is hugs and kisses. No, this is an action word. This is an action. So, yeah, no, uh, John, uh, first John, five and three. The book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. So this is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. So if you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. Right? That's how you love God. So by loving God, sis, what you going to do today? Exactly. Yes, right. That's what you do. You put on the dress, right? That's what you do. That's how you love God. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. It's not hard to do. It's not hard to put on a dress, right? So we're going to give y'all another. Let me get fringes, right? So this is for both of y'all, too, because the love of God is to keep his commandments. That's if you right. love God, then you're going to do exactly what he say. we not out here saying saying our own words. we just reading the Bible. That's right. we got love for our people. That's why we're rising early to tell them not to do the abominable things that he hates. That's right. right. Read what you got. The book of Numbers. Chapter 15, verse 37. Bring it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, yep. Speak unto the children of Israel. So God told Moses to speak unto the children of Israel, the, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's over here. He told, he, he said, Moses, speak unto these people right here. Nobody else. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the corner. It says, and bid, which means and command them. We are here to command and tell y'all. Right, read. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So to make your fringes in the borders of your garments. So sis, when you get that dress, you gotta have fringes on the at the end of it. And bro, your shirt, 
got to have fringes on there at the end of it. Read. And the better than their garments throughout their generation. Only sometime. Throughout their generation. Just y'all two. Throughout their generation. So every time y'all generate, y'all got to have, y'all make sure y'all children have fringes. Right? That's what we have to do as an Israelite. This is what we require to do. We require to teach our children the same thing we've been taught. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So upon that fringe is a ribbon of blue. It could be any color blue, but it has to be blue. It can't be black, pink, pink, or purple. It has to be blue with fringes. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. So this fringe will be unto you, Israel. It's going to be unto you. Read. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So when you got your fringes on, you're going to look upon them and do the commandments. So if you don't have your fringes on, how is it going to remind you to do the commandments? It's not because there's no such thing as spiritual fringes. That's right. Or it's in my mind. Just because I know it, that don't mean that you can't do it. So you have to do it. Just because you say, okay, I know this, I don't have to wear my fringes. No. The Bible says, do them. Do the commandments. Read. And, and that you seek not after your own heart. Don't seek after your own heart saying, okay, I'm going to wear my dress. I got a dress on, so I, he ain't going to kill me because of that. But you ain't got no fringes on the bottom of it. How you going to remember to keep the commandments? You might go out here and buy some milk on the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? How you going to, uh, bro, you probably going to get a haircut on this on Saturday. You ain't got no fringes on. You'll be like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to go to the barbershop and just fade me up real quick. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to remember the commandments. Keep the fringes on and do the commandments. Read. That's right. And your own eyes after which you used to go a whoring. So these are things we used to do. So now that y'all know that y'all Israelites, and y'all got to keep the fringes on, and you got to have a dress on, and brother, you got to have dress, I mean, fringes on the bottom of your shirt, right? So as we know to do them, we got to make haste to do that. As we know it, as we teach y'all right now, that means you have to make haste. That means, you know, I'm only up here telling y'all what the Bible is saying. I got love for y'all, so I don't want y'all to die. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling y'all to make haste as the Bible is saying. Give me what, give me the haste. So we're going to tell, because the Bible is precept upon precept, line upon line. Everything that we speak out here is going to come from this word right here. There ain't going to be nothing that I say that I can't go to the Bible. That's right. Right? You got it? Psalms uh, 119. One oh five. So we gonna uh, show y'all what the haste is. You got it. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter one nineteen, verse sixty. Bring it on. I made haste and delay not. So the Bible says I've made haste. That means I quickly, as I heard it, I went ahead and did it as soon as I can. Read. Verse fifty nine. I thought on my ways and turned my feet. And to thy testimonies. So it says, I thought on my ways. That means as you're hearing it, you're thinking like, okay, I love the most high. So I'm going to go ahead and get fringes. I'm going to go ahead and put my dress on. I'm going to go ahead and cover my head while the scriptures is coming out. That's you making, that's you thinking on your ways, right? Really? It, I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandment. So it says, I made haste, right? Read. Read it again. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandment. So you delaying not to keep the commandments of God because y'all love the most high God. Y'all want to make it to the kingdom, right? This is what you have to do. All right, you got a question? All right. Um, can you elaborate what, about the head covering? I will. Let me get uh, 1 Corinthians 11. This is for, uh, start at uh, 3, because we're going to get the order, and then we're going to go all the way down, all right? Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. It but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ. We have a head. It's somebody we have to listen to. So we listen to Christ and the Most High because they above us. Right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is the man. So if y'all, I mean, I don't know if y'all a couple or not, but like, 
if if y'all was to get married, right, you would be the man of the household. She has to listen to you. There's no equality. There's no 50-50. That don't mean you run your house like a lion. You treat your you treat your wife as Christ uh, treated the church. You treat her with respect according to the laws, right? Read what you got. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. So Christ has a head. Christ has a head he has to follow, right? So the woman has to follow man, man follow Christ, Christ follow the most high God. That's the order right there. But we're going to get to what you uh, asked about, all right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. So every man that has his head covered while we praying or prophesying, which is teaching right now, they dishonor their head. They dishonor in Christ. They dishonor in the most high God. That's so if you see a man teaching this word and they got something on their head, they in sin. That's right. They in sin. And the wages of sin is death. Right? So that's what the Bible says for the man. But now we're gonna get to what the woman is supposed to do. Read. But every woman, but every woman that prayers or prophesy, even when you pray, even when you pray, you have to have your head covered. Even when you prophesying or listening to listening to scriptures, this is what you got to do. Read. With her head uncovered. So if your head is uncovered, read. Dishonoring her head. You dishonoring your head. So when you when you praying or listening to scriptures and you don't have your head covered, you dishonoring your head, which is the man Christ in the most high, which means you are sin. Right. Let me get the wages of sin. So that's what it means. You have to have your head covered and the man has to have his head uncovered. Right. Period. So the wages of sin is death, as I said before. So I'm going to bring it out to you. Read. Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. So the wages of sin is death. As we told y'all, uh, what sin was in 1 John 3 and 4. Transgressing the law is sin. So if you sin, the wages of sin is death. So that means if you don't make haste to what's going on, to what we're telling y'all right now, the wages is what? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Because you're telling the Most High God you don't love him. So in order to love him, you're going to make haste to do what he do what He tells you to do. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 76. This is the reason why. Give me Deuteronomy 76. The Most High God loves y'all, and He chose us to be His uh, to be His people. That's it. Nobody else, right? Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verse six. But thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. So you are holy people unto the Lord thy God. Y'all holy. Y'all separate from everybody else. Y'all royalty. He chose y'all. He chose y'all to be here right now because y'all royalty. That's he right. wants y'all to hear this. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. So he chosen thee. He chosen y'all. What's y'all names? Janae. Janae? Bryce. Bryce? Janae or Bryce. He had chosen thee. He chose y'all right now. Read. To be a special people unto himself. To be what? A special people unto himself. To be a special people unto himself. So the Most High chose y'all to be special unto himself. That means he's loved you and nobody else. That's what he's telling you. But if you love him, then you're going to keep his commandments. If you love him, you're going to keep the commandments. That's the love of God. Right? Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So everybody outside of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, y'all are better than. That's right. Y'all are holy unto the, uh, the uh, most high God. He yeah, chose right. y'all. He chose y'all this day to keep the commandments. Right? So, um... Uh, that's my time. I'm going to let the next brother come up and edify the people.